Thank you so much, Betty. Thank you all for coming. It's wonderful to see a, a, a full house tonight. Thank you. Thank you to Israel Nitzan. You know, it's a, it's a true compliment that you're, you're not required to be here. You know that. You don't have, no one's ordering you back in Tel Aviv to, to go to Jerusalem to come. So I, I really appreciate seeing you. Um, tonight is a very special occasion. Uh, it nearly didn't happen. It, it, it was uh, less than a week in, in planning it. But we felt it was critically important to gather on this on this evening to mark November 30, the day that the Knesset voted to recognize the Middle Eastern Jewish experience. And at ASF, over the past few years, we've taken a different tact with this event. Yes, it's about suffering. Yes, it's about refugees. But it's also, as the Deputy Mayor of Jerusalem said at one of our events, it's about what we, not only where we got kicked out of, it's what we contributed. Jews contributed to the Middle East flourishing in the past. For most of Middle Eastern history, you would, if you would think of terms that define the region, you would say pluralism, tolerance, trade. Sephardic Jews were the travelers, traders, the philosophers, the poets, the singers and scientists throughout the region. And it's fitting we're going to have one of our Sephardi House students perform, who is both a virtuoso musician and uh, an a amazing scientist in a PhD program right now. So we wanted to always bring that together. We also wanted to have a dialogue. It's, you know, preaching to the choir uh, doesn't help us. It's not Jewish refugees or their descendants who need to hear these stories. It's young Arabs, Berbers, Kurds, Persians today who have grown up surrounded by Jewish history but have no idea about the Jewish uh, history that, that they lived in, that their parents, that their grandparents were part of. The other reason why we wanted to contribute and to make sure this event happened is something that we at the ASF has been, have been warning about amidst all the celebrations of the Abraham Accords. Sometimes uh, I've been accused of being doom and gloom. And the doom and gloom was, yes, this is a wonderful event, we should celebrate it, we should be uh, happy and, and build on it, but we also have to remember what happened 100 years ago. Why did the Middle East go from pluralism and tolerance and trade to being defined by extremism, fanaticism, hatred, terrorism, and that is Islamism. The Islamist cancer that began and which poisoned the relationship. There was even into the 1940s, there were Egyptians, uh, major Egyptian writers and publications that celebrated Israel, that were Zionist. What happened? Why did this total change in the mentality occur? So we at the ASF have worked very closely and sometimes been criticized for it, for working with Muslim organizations but the reason why we have done so is because we found true friends. People, you'll hear from one of them later today, uh, Zainab Khan. People who are dedicated to undoing the damage of the last hundred years. I wanted to bring you something to see from our archive, which someone mailed to me uh, recently. To show, give you an idea of how long the ASF has been involved in this issue. So in, in 1975, the Ba'athist regime in Iraq purchased an ad in the New York Times and invited the Iraqi Jews to return. So the American Sephardi Federation purchased an ad in the New York Times in January 1976 and said, invitation declined. <laughs> <laughs> it notes that the Jewish refugees from Iraq must refuse this invitation. They know only too well what it means. Sudden disappearances, murders, hangings, arbitrary imprisonments, confiscation of property, living in fear and humiliation, and discrimination in all walks of life. Do those words not sound familiar these days, especially for our young students on campuses where Jews are being attacked and we'll hear from a panel of our Sephardi House fellows. Uh, you know, there's, there's 
frequently, and the ASF is very proud to try to get representation for Sephardim. As you see, we've been doing it for 50 years. Um, I'm happy to say today the Sephardic voice is disproportionate. Both of the students who testified in Congress in recent weeks were ASF Sephardi House Fellows. One of the co-authors of the New York Times op-ed on go what's going on on campus, a Sephardi House Fellow. The two top articles at the Yale Daily News and on and on. Why is that? Why do you think? You know, Sephardim are a minority within a minority in this country. We've had 88 students to date, and yet they are overrepresented in every way. I'll, I'll give you my, my hypothesis. So in building Sephardi House, which uh, I hope he'll, he'll make it Joshua Banaim, he had a vision. He was seeing what was coming on campus. He was hearing from people like Adela Kohab, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight, but what her experiences at NYU really presaged what's happening now. She was confronted, her members were assaulted when they had a pro-Israel event. Her, she was asked to withdraw from her Arabic language class. A C proud Syrian Sephardic Jew was told she couldn't take Arabic at NYU. You know why? Because the people in her class were afraid she would use her, quote, Zionist black magic to get them arrested. So I told her, you have such powerful magic. You know, you got people who committed assault and arson in a public park arrested. This is, this is amazing. Adela's experience really fed into our ideas for Sephardi House and what Josh was seeing. And Josh, to his credit, said, let's go ahead with it. Let's teach the students the history, philosophy, the culture. Let's give them the resilience that the Sephardic tradition has had. And which is, by the way, when we say Sephardic, we mean bringing all Jews together. It's not limited to, to an ethnicity or uh, a, a, a country. Uh, this is especially important for someone like me who's mostly a Litvak. Um, we, we, need, we need to have that, that strength and resilience. So it's not a surprise that our students are in the vanguard right now. It is a surprise to, to other people who criticized us and said, oh, you're too intellectual, you're too academic. But the fact is when, it, when it, the chips are down, our students know who they are. They appreciate the beauty, depth, diversity, and vitality of the Jewish experience. They understand that we do not exist to resist anti-Semitism. It's important for us to fight anti-Semitism, but as Josh says, we want to win. We have a positive purpose in the world, and that's what ASF is about. That's what we want to bring together with this event, and we're so appreciative that you're all coming this evening. Thank you.